Hey everybody, Grimer here coming at you with another Valheim tutorial. Alright, now if you guys have been following my Valheim Online series, you know that I created a starter house in that series that basically I can still live in. Like, <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm past the second boss, we're going on to Bone Mass at this point in the game, and, uh, and I'm still very comfortably living in there. I got Comfort 12, everything's great now. Comfort 12 is something that I worked on during our playthrough. However, uh, you could start off with that base too. All you need is just a bunch of wood. So now, when you're starting off in Valheim, you could start off in a base that looks something like this. And it will be functional, but it's not very comfy and it's not very aesthetically pleasing. Or you could work uh, out of something that looks like this. And that second option there is what I'm going to try to teach you how to build today. Alright, so here we are in a nice little area in the woods. Now, for building this, uh, when you're trying to pick out a place for a starter location, always re uh, remember that it's probably a good idea to be somewhere near the coast, near the uh, the ocean, because when it comes to transporting large quantities of metal and stuff like that, you're going to want to be able to pull your boats right up to where your starter base is and your starter uh, little base or uh, location is going to be. So, I'd recommend picking a place that's in the meadows, of course, because it's the safest. In the forest someplace, they have plenty of wood that you can harvest and near coast. So this is an ideal location right here. So all right, now let's get to uh, laying down this uh, actual foundation. First thing you're going to do is you want to level off the land a little bit. So get out your hoe. Uh, set up a makeshift crafting station just like this one you see here. And then uh, and then work on leveling off the land to get this uh, to be a nice level, uh, base for what you want. And it doesn't have to be too big. Just uh, this is a small small footprint on this on this uh, starter shack here. All right, once you have your place leveled off like that, that makes it for an ideal location to start actually building. Now, to do that, you're going to need a bunch of wood. So, luckily, you started in a forest, right? So, pull out your axe. Now, I have an iron axe. That's just because of the character I'm using. But you can do this with a stone axe or a flint axe. Early, early game stuff. This doesn't take any core wood. You don't have to venture into the black, uh, black forest at all to build this. Uh, so it doesn't really matter about that. You can just stay right here in the meadow and build this entire base. So, just collect yourself up a bunch of wood because you're going to need it. Alright, after you've done some deforesting, you'll probably have something that looks a little bit like this, where this no longer looks like a forest and it looks more like a field. Uh, but that's the reason why you want to set up in the woods, so that you have plenty of wood. Now, I managed to collect uh, about two and almost three chests fulls of wood just doing this, so I think that's plenty to get started on building. Alright, so let's let's grab some wood, and this is the layout that you're going to want to do. You're going to want to work on making the foundation first for this place. So grab your hammer, make sure you have a workbench nearby, which I have one right there. I'm going to actually set up another one over here just so that I, I can hit uh, both sides of this if I can find a place to put it. There we go. All right, go ahead and grab, uh, get your building blocks, and you're going to start laying down the foundation for this place. So uh, we're going to want to start on one corner here, and uh, let's let's have this be like the back of the house right here. There's deer everywhere. Jeez. All right, so you're going to want to place uh, place a uh, uh, one of these one meter, uh, or yeah, one of these wood wooden poles, one meter. And then this is going to be the foundation for your house. So you're going to want to take the, the two meter uh, wood uh, beams and start placing them sideways. And you're going to want to put down two and then place down a, a support every every two. That'll give your foundation plenty of support for what's to come for as far as like the uh, as far as the roof and whatnot. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to have this go out a grand total of five of them. So right here, there's five right there. Now this is a very small house. But uh, that's going to be the main room, okay? But if you go out, actually, you should probably go out a grand total of six because that's going to be the main room, and then this is going to be your extra storage over here. So, uh, sorry, not five, six is what you're going to want to do. All right, so that's that's the back wall of the house. So at least the foundation for the back wall. On the front, you're going to want to rotate this 90 degrees, and you're going to bring this forward a grand total of four. Uh, actually, you don't scratch that. It's a grand total of five. I'm off by one all day. Ooh, not right there. Grand total of five. Now, for the building itself, it's actually four. But for the uh, if you want to include the nice little porch in the front, it's going to be five. So there's your four. There's your five. All right? And then you want to add a support onto this as well. So that's going to be your porch. So let's stick with the shape of the building for right now. And starting from right here, this is the shape of the building. Remember, this is the porch up front. This is the building. You're going to want to bring this one in to a total of three. And this one, you can actually add the support uh, right here instead of putting it every two. So bring that in three. This is going to be where your front door is right here. All right. And let's outline the porch now that we're doing this part here. Let's bring this over three as well. And then put down a support. And then switch this over to the two meter wood beam again. Bring this forward. Now this part is where your workbench is going to sit actually inside the house. You want to bring this forward too. So grand total from this, this corner right here. 
Uh, let's uh, let's get the mud beam off there. From this corner right here, you want to bring this forward two of those two meter wood beams, so a grand total of four meters. And of course, throw it on a support. This is all just laying down the foundation for your build. Okay, back to the two meter wood beams. You're gonna bring this over two, and that's gonna be your um, where your workbench sits is just on the inside of this right here. And then put down a support, and then back to the two meter wood beams, and bring this back another two. And then you may notice that this isn't exactly lining up. Oh, let's add, let's add a support. Can never have too many supports on this thing. Uh, this isn't exactly lining up, so what you wanna do is you wanna bring this over one support, back to the two meter wood beams, and you wanna bring this over until it matches up with the other one, putting in the support right smack dab in the middle. Not right there, a little misclick. Like that. All right, there's the shape of your house right there. It's a very small, compact house, and it'll carry you well into mid-game to even the end game, actually. So, All right, so now you're going to want to start putting down the floor, and you're going to want to make sure the floor is supported, too, so that you can put whatever you want on there. So let's get the floor put in here. Now, for me, I like to actually do like a little, uh, little uh, rotate these 90 degrees pattern kind of all the way along the floor. I think it adds, it kind of breaks up the floor a little bit. It doesn't look as uh, boring uh, or... Uh, or is one tone, what, what just attacked something right there? Something just attacked something. Oh, there's a boar attacking my workbench, what a jerk. Um, so yeah, if you wanna do that, it's entirely up to you to do the same kind of floor I'm doing. It's, it's, uh, it's your preference really, but just basically throw the wood floor in here, however you see fit. Now, once you get about two of them in like this, you wanna take some supports right here, every two, uh, two by two floor panels that you're doing here, and just throw those in. You really only need a couple of them right there. That means maybe maybe one more somewhere around here. And that'll add plenty of support for your uh, for your building itself. All right. Once you have the floor put in, then you're ready to move on to doing like the walls and the edges of the uh, and the supports for the walls and whatnot. But let's uh, let's start off here uh, at the porch, and then we'll go from there. So let's take a uh, take some stairs right here, and just slap those bad boys down on the front. Voila! You got your stairs leading up here. You can also work on the frame kind of for the uh, for the railing here as well. Uh, actually, take that, take that off. I scratched that. That's not right. Um, which uh, eh, I actually kind of do need that for a little bit at least. You can use that, and then uh, that that'll get the height of your railing done correctly. The uh, one meter pole there, right there, or one one meter, yeah, one one meter wood pole. Man, I'm getting my words all tangled up. All right, so wooden uh, the wooden beam two meters. You can put that to either side of it, and then again support it right here. This will create your uh, your railing for on the sides of your porch, just like that. All right, now you're good to go on the porch. The porch is basically finished. You work on the overhang once you get the walls in. Now you notice when you go up the stairs here, this kind of sucks. All right, you just kind of get stuck right there. Go ahead and remove that two meter wood beam right there, and you'll have no problem getting through there. All right, so here's your door. Let's start off with that. I use, like to use wood gates because I think that the wood doors are way too small. Now you can have this turn whichever way you like. It doesn't really matter. But go ahead and smack that bad boy down right there, right smack dab in the middle. Because that way you can just waltz right in. Except for you may notice that the same thing happens with like the, there's a little lip right there that kind of is annoying to walk over. Go ahead and break that two meter wood beam and you can just walk right in no problem. I also made sure that the orientation on the porch is also the same way with the, with the wood. I don't know. Personal preference. It's entirely up to you. All right, so now that we have the uh, now that we have the door in place, we can start working on the walls and windows. All right, so let's get out your uh, your wooden wall right here, and let's start smacking these bad boys down on either side. Now you can actually do this all the way around, and then replace it with where you want your windows. It's entirely up to you. Uh, so for this one, I'm going to actually go ahead and put the wood walls all the way around, and then that way we can replace them later on with which ones that we need, what which, where we'd want our windows to go. All right, so now that we have the walls put up on the sides all the way around, what we're going to want to do is allocate where the windows are going to go before we get too far into this. So I'm going to put like a double window right here. This is what I did on my base anyway, so that you guys can copy along if you'd like. And you just put these uh, these half wood walls, or these wood half walls, wood wall half, that's the name of it, uh, at the, on the base of the wall right there for where you want to put these windows. Now, this is kind of interesting, because right here, this little indent right here, this is where your storage system is going to go. It's going to house about 30 chests if you do it right. So this wall right here, you want to keep complete, but then one over, so like, let me line that up again right here. If you line yourself up here, going back this way, this wall you run into will be complete and go just one over and break that one right there. And then you can put a half wall right there and then go over two and break this one too, because that's another spot, a good spot for a window. And that's it for your windows. That's all you really need. All right, so now it's all about building up the uh, the walls to be uh, the appropriate height. So you're just going to want to throw another wall on top of all of these, just like this. Uh, almost all the way around. 
skip this area in here. You're not going to want to put them in there. But uh, as far as the main bulk of the build in this larger room, you're going to want to do it in here. Now put those all on top of the... Oop, not right there. All on top of the existing full walls. And then you're going to want to... Can we get these in here too? You're, then you're going to want to put the half walls in the top half over here. All right, switching to the half walls. I'll rotate these to get these in, in place. You want to put those in on the top half of the walls you just placed right here. Now, as far as filling out the framework for the windows, you're going to switch back to your wood beams. Line the bottom and top of these things. And you can do the, you can do your, your windows however you like. Some people like to do their windows with X's in them. Some people like to do it with a cross in them. But for this one, I'm just going to do... Oh, you can actually keep that wood beam. Just that shape right there. All with two, two meter wood beams. I think it looks nice just the way it is. Same thing with these ones over here. You can jazz them up however you like. But you're just basically going to outline them with the wood beams. Both the horizontal and the vertical ones. And then that's going to be it for that place right there. Oh, you're also going to want to put a half wall right up here on top of the door too. All right, so the next step is probably going to be the roof, okay? That's probably where you're going to want to be. Now, we're going to start over here where the crafting bench is going to go, which, by the way, you can actually add now if you'd like. Uh, you can throw the crafting bench in right there. It fits nice and beautifully in there. It needs a roof, though. So if you're going to work on repairing your tools and you want to take down your makeshift one over there, you're going to want to get a roof on this thing. So I start with the 26 degree thatch roofs. And on this, remember, these didn't get any extra walls built up around them, but on this one here, you, you slap those bad boys down right over the workbench. All right, and then you switch to the 45 degree uh, thatch roofs and put those down on top of that. All right, and now here comes the fun part, filling in that little space. All right, so switch to the appropriate angled uh, wood block or wood wall that has the angle that fits it. And then on this next part, you're gonna wanna switch to the wood uh, wall half and rotate it so that it's in the correct orientation. Same thing on this side. And then you're gonna to wanna to switch to the 45 degree wood wall and squeeze those in just like that. So then it fits in very nicely like that. Now this thing should be good to go then. You can actually use this to repair your stuff. All right, it's right about now that you're gonna probably wanna start on the, the ceiling itself. Now on this side over here by where the door is, you're gonna to wanna to switch to your uh, 26 degree thatch roofs and place those all, ooh, not right there, that's a bad placement. Place those all along the top right here. Now, once you get one row of those in, you can switch it up to the 45 degree uh, thatch roof and start placing those in on top of it. Ooh, need to go grab more wood, one second. All right, more wood acquired. Place your 45 degree thatch roof up on top just like that. Now, you may notice that this is starting to get a little weak, a little weak, okay? It's getting pretty rough. So uh, you're, you're gonna wanna build up the walls on the sides a little bit to add support to that. So get with your uh, your 26 degree uh, wall right there to squeeze in on these sides right here. And then uh, this is where it gets kind of fun because there is no chimney on this build, which by the way, your campfire is gonna go like right here. Um, but there is no chimney on this build, but you do have to have exhaust ports for the uh, the smoke to go on the at the peak of the roof. Which means you don't want to just build this wall up to be flat and flush. Otherwise, you're not going to leave room for the smoke to exhaust. So this part right here gets a little tricky. And what I like to do is I like to take the 26 degree angled wood piece, put that thing back the other way. Now this is going to leave an opening right here uh, on the edge of your roof, which is just fine, all right? It's just fine. It works out just, just great. All right, so then this one you can actually go back the other way then. And that leaves a nice little design right here. Now it's it's asymmetrical. So if, the, if symmetry is your game, this is gonna <laughs> this is gonna bug you really bad. But you know it looks good in the end. So uh, and if you can, you might have to get up here actually using ladders. Um, if you can, you're gonna want to try to place a wood a two meter wood beam here right on top of this. All right. So you might be able to save that for a later step too, because once you do the trim on the on the ceiling, that'll work. But uh, but right there, and then I also like to add one right here. <laughs> this is a little little complicated. And then I switch to 26 degree beam, and I try to get it to lock into place right there. Now, if you can get it to connect to the other, uh, you know, ceiling right there, that'd be even better. But what you can do instead to add a little bit of support, you can just do that. Take the two meter wood beam. Actually, the one meter wood beam might might work. Yeah, it looks like it does, and that'll add stability to this just a little bit. All right, not much. Just a little bit, though. All right, now on to this other wall. All right, for this other wall, getting this to work out, switch to your wood walls right here. 
and remove the pieces above the windows. That was actually kind of a mistake. Um, you're going to want to place these wood walls. Let me get rid of this ladder too because that's not going to be helpful right now. You're going to want to place these wood walls right in there. All right. Just like so. Now the rest of this right up on top here, you're going to switch to your half wood walls uh, and fill that in to right here. Okay, not this last one because we got we got special plans for that. All right, so now to fill in the top part right here, you're going to want to switch to the um, two meter wood beams and you're just going to want to line the roof or line the, the top edge of this like so. And then you want to switch to your 45 degree beam. If you can get that to snap onto the edge of that, that uh that 45 degree thatch roof. That's what you're going for right there. All right, now we take your two meter uh, uh, wood poles and place those right there. There's your support for this one a little bit, a little bit, not much. This is gonna be a very close call. This is about as tall as you can build just with this wood stuff without using core wood. All right, now go over here to this other one. And this is where it's gonna get really tricky because you're gonna want to try to create an invisible kind of barrier where this roof is going to start. So I guess maybe the best thing to do would be to start on this part before you continue the roof over there. So once you're this far, just take a break from this spot and head over here to where the storage system is going to be, because this is going to be the fun part. Okay. I got a little overzealous here when telling you to put all these wood walls up here, because we're going to actually have to remove some. We're going to want to remove this one right here. And you want to remove this one right here and probably let's see, these two as well, this one and this one. The other one should be fine though. All right, what we're gonna do is we're gonna create like a curved ceiling on this, like almost like a, if you took a, like a coin and turn it on side, that's what you're gonna do. Yeah, that's what you want for this one. So you're gonna wanna take your 45 degree roofs and you're gonna wanna slap those bad boys right there and right there, all right? Now you're gonna wanna switch to your uh, 26 degree roofs and you're gonna wanna add those like so. Just like that. All right, so there's your curved roof that you're looking for. Now fill in the gaps behind there with the appropriate angle, so the 26 degrees on top, like so, and turn it. And then 45 degrees for the other ones. Just like so, oh, leg spike. It is an early access game, so there's gonna be leg spikes. All right, so there you go, you have that now. Now comes the tricky part. So if you look on this wall over here, this is one, two full uh, full size walls up. You're gonna want to make sure that you start the wall or start the ceiling at the same height. So, which means that the height of the ceiling actually starts right here, not up here at the top of the part uh, top of this right here. Which means that this actually needs to be changed as well. This should actually be a 26 degree uh, 26 degree wall like that. All right, so that's where the wall, that's where the ceiling starts. So getting that to seal up is going to be a little bit of a trick, all right? So basically, if you want to take your two-meter beams and just bring those straight across, um, that'll give you an idea of just kind of where you're working with right there. And now right here, if you want to support this just a little bit or add a, what looks like some nice extra support to it, you can add your two-meter beams going up there. That'll outline your wall real nice, and that's what you're going to be working with, all right? So starting from there is where you can actually finish the roof over here. But before we hop onto that, let's try to get this part sealed up, all right? So let's go ahead and take a uh, the 45 degree wood beam and slap these on the sides of the, uh, the thatch roofs on this side right here. And now this part gets a little interesting because th there really isn't any panel that you can throw in here to make this work. You could try this, that's not too shabby, all right? Here's your options, this is options for you people. You could just slap that down and say good enough and then maybe that is good enough for you. Entirely up to you as to what you do for this part right here but you have to try to finagle this thing to be sealed up somehow. I'm gonna go ahead and remove that wood beam right now and I'm going to try and get this to take up a huge portion of that area like that. Now remember, if you hold shift, you can actually get rid of now uh, get get rid of the locking mechanism on the game. So like where this wants to like lock onto all these spots, you can hold shift and it just detaches that and it just slides freely. Uh, now I can't exactly do that on this side because <laughs> because it's gonna end up causing it to uh, stick out right here. So I'm gonna have to get a little bit more creative when it comes to that side. Use your uh, wood beams and your uh, and your your smaller wood beams like right here. I could actually do this with the smaller wood beams uh, to get this to fill in. However you see fit, like this, you could do a little something like that. And that doesn't look too bad. That, that kind of works, you know? Maybe slap another one in here because it kind of looks a little janky. But you could also switch the two meter beams here like this and create like a little outline around it, which I think looks pretty good. Um, so yeah, use the, in fact, I'm gonna do the same thing on this side just so that I keep the, keep the same design going. 
Use your wood beams uh, to fill in these areas the best you can. It's not going to be perfect, but remember the best part about this game is that even if it doesn't look perfect, it still ends up turning out pretty good. Just like that. Bam. Sealed that area up as weird a shape as that was, it still worked. Now, there is still some jankiness right here, right? Okay, so we still got some stuff to do. But now you're ready to move on to the actual rest of the ceiling. All right, switching to the 26 degree thatch roofs. You're gonna wanna attach these onto the top of this beam that you just put down. And you're gonna need to do some work on the roof to get this to kind of make sense later. Now, there is this gap right here, all right? So take your uh, 26 degree wood beam, rotate it and snap it on there so that it, it fills in. Come on, snap on there, there you go. And that, for the most part, fills that in. Remember, that it doesn't have to be perfect. It looks fine just the way it is. All right, now switch to your 45 degree roofs and you're gonna slap these bad boys onto the end of the 26 degree thatch roofs here. This will raise the roof up quite a bit, and now you're getting to the part where it's getting really weak, but it's still kind of supported here on the edge because of the supports we put here. You're gonna to wanna to do the same support on this side as well that you did. Uh, so you wanna take your uh, your wood pole two meters, just like you did here, and you're gonna attach that right there as well. See if you can't get the 45 degree wood beam also to attach on the outside of the uh, the thatch roof there and it should uh, make that nice and stable all right so now you need to get up there so the best way i found of getting up there is you can if you have a hill actually you can just straight up jump onto this thing uh if your jumping skill isn't that good because you just started off you can always put down a ladder that works too and you want to take your good old x your big x uh, and you're going to get that up there so what is this called uh wood roof cross 45 degrees you want to get that right on top of here i'm having trouble standing on there so i'm going to throw it on just some stairs um and then slap that bad boy on right there and if you can get it over there as well all right so now you can put down your 45 degree roof on top of this right in the center and bring this all the way across now it's gonna turn red all right it's gonna turn red this is as high as you can build without core wood so this is as, as big as you're gonna get unless you go to the dark forest i'm trying to build, give you guys a, a way of building this without going to the dark forest all right, now while you're up here, there's this hole right here that you can fill in as well. So take your 26 degree wood beams and put them in right there like so. And that basically fills it in. You can get a little nitpicky with a, your uh, your two meter beam actually, and you can just stick that in right there as well. So that'll seal it up completely. And while you're up here, if you if you like the uh, if you like the the crosses, the the roof crosses, you can actually attach these on here. You could attach them on the back, but I found that it looks a little weird when you double up. I like to just put one right here on the front. And then that's done right there. You can also outline your roof if you'd like to. That's entirely up to you. You can put down these wood beams on here. Uh, or you can leave them with the thatch kind of exposed. I kind of do like the thatch being exposed. I think that looks pretty nifty. So I'm just going to leave it like that. Optional things for you. Now, you can also... He, let's see if I can't get back up there. Uh, you can also... Um, put down the wood wood beams across the top across the the peak of the roof like that i think that looks really good and then you can also use the wood beams to kind of outline uh the roof itself while you're up here as as well so like uh the 45 degrees going down the other side especially on the front here you're gonna want to slap those bad boys on there to create a nice outline you can also then take it one step further and have this be embedded in here but it doesn't really match up so well eh, it kind of does with up here so you can kind of get something like this going. I think it, this kind of design put in almost any roof sort of sort of like really sells it, you know? Let's see if we can't get that one to lock in right there. That might interfere with down below, but we'll, we'll check that out in a little bit. And then right there. So that makes it look like it's got a lot of uh, rigidity and support to the roof that most roofs don't. Now, the front of this, okay, let's go take a peek inside real quick before I do the front. This is basically the building itself. There's a little bit of jankiness right there that we're gonna take care of real fast by taking the two meter wood beam, filling that in, and then the same trick that we used, actually this one, coincidentally, you can actually use the 45 degree uh, uh, wall. Let's remove that real quick, even though we just placed it there, just so that this is easier to place. And let's remove the, the siding on that because this will take the place of it. Look at that, that actually works out way better. That's way easier. You can still replace the two meter wood beam across it to make it look like it's more structurally sound, but that's it. All right, so your roof is effectively in place and done. Now the best part about this is there's no chimney, so this has to exhaust vent uh, or exhaust the smoke in it. So right here, I want to remove this piece completely, and you're going to need to go gather some stones, which I actually don't have, so I got to go do that. 
All right, I got some stones. All right, so you're going to want to, because you can't place campfires on wood in the beginning, especially. You have to play, well, you can't place them on wood anytime. You have to place them on stone or on ground. And since you don't have access to stone in the early parts of the game, you have to raise the ground up. So go collect yourself some uh, some stones. It takes four to do, do this once. You're going to want to raise this ground up a couple of times. That's actually probably pretty good. Um, doesn't have to be too fancy. And then what you're going to want to do is you want to take your campfire and you want to slap that bad boy down right on top of it. Now check out what happens to the smoke in here. All right, as you can see, the smoke is resting at the top peak of the roof right up there. And it kind of exhausts to the left and right, but it never comes down to you. You never actually get choked out from the smoke in here. So this will actually work for a living space. You can see it's starting to travel across. No chimney, but it still works. <laughs> All right, so now that you have this done inside here, go ahead and let's get to work on the front part of the building right here this is this uh, little porch needs an awning now these stairs are going to be exposed so they're going to get a little run down every once in a while you might have to repair them occasionally uh but go ahead and grab uh let's see let's take the 45 degree thatch roofing and, you, and you're not going to want to put it right above the door just one step above it like right there all right then take the appropriate sloped roof that goes with it and connect them to either side like that you can also go ahead and take your two meter wood beams and connect them in the corners to look, make it look like it's uh, being held up by the actual um, porch there. And that, there you go, you got it. Now you can slap a sign on here, put your name on it. That's what I did on on, uh, on the Valheim Online server. But this is basically the build completed. You're ready to go, you're ready to move in. You can start taking your chests and moving them in. So as a little extra bonus, I mean, you can slap your bed down wherever you'd want. Um, it doesn't really matter. I think I put mine right here on the series, but, um, uh, you can see it's comfort four in here already. Now, if you go get a, a, a deer skin rug, it's comfort five. If you happen to accidentally knock down a birch tree and break that up while you're chopping all these trees, you can put a chair in here and get comfort six. You can keep uh, increasing your comfort levels. But one thing I'm going to go over right now is placing the chests in here because I got 30 chests in here when I wasn't even really trying. So let's, let's take some chests here and we're going to line this whole bottom part. And we're going to squeeze as many in there as we can and see, oh, I got to go grab more wood. And see how many chests that we can actually put in here. So let's go ahead and keep crushing these chests in here. See if we can't get them to fit in here kind of somewhat evenly. I'm going to have to really squeeze this in to get this last one. Like so. All right. Now, if you guys don't know how to stack chests on top of each other, I'm about to show you right here. Go into your building thing with your hammer. Grab your one meter, one by one flooring. And basically, you're going to want to put that right above the chest. Now, you can remove this later. If the chest is far enough back and it's touching the wall, it will actually like connect to the wall. But you can also just leave it in there too. So let, go back to furniture, get more chests. Now you can actually place these things right on top of the other ones. So let's see how many chests we can smash in here by doing that technique. Once you get to the part where it starts sloping in like this, you're not gonna have a whole lot of room to put another chest in there. So I actually just brought it in one instead. These actually connect for the most part right to the top of the, the wall in the back. So I go ahead and get some stairs put in so that you can reach up higher. I got to grab some more wood. Yep, go ahead and place down some stairs so you can reach up a little bit higher. And then squeeze these in here as well. All right, and there you go. I got a bunch of chests in here. How many are in here? Uh, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32. I actually squeezed 32 in here, and I wasn't even really trying. I probably could have actually squeezed one or two more. 32 regular chests. Now, once you get to Iron Age, you can actually upgrade these to be bigger chests. But, I mean, that's a lot of storage to start off. And all of this wood I collected on this world. I didn't actually go and uh, bring it in from another world. This is straight from chopping down this forest around here. But there you go. That's that's the that's the base in a nutshell right there. That's how you actually make this place. This place is good to go. Like I said, you go get some uh, deer hide. You throw this down. Look at this. This is the this is the starter shack that you could be living in, or you could be living in this one. It's kind of your choice. Which one do you like? But let's go grab some like uh, some deer skin here, for example, and uh, throw that in my inventory. Let's go put down a deerskin rug in here. Some easy stuff that you can make early on to give yourself extra comfort level in here. You can do that easily right here. And you don't even have to go to the Black Forest. So that's it. That's the tutorial. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this build. And if you did, please be sure to smash that like button. It helps me out a ton. Uh, I will be back with some more tutorials in the future if I come up with some new fun stuff to build. And uh, if you did like this build, let me know in the comments as well. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. And I will see you guys in another build. Bye-bye.